you are welcome to our bible study i'm excited to have you it is always a delight to bring the teaching of god to you and i'm trusting god today that god himself will teach you it is important for us to grow in the knowledge of our faith it is a thing to receive jesus christ as a personal lord and savior but what is it that god is calling us to accomplish while we are living here in this present world i believe we can learn a lot from the scripture the scripture god gave us his word so that we can align our ways to his will and we've been learning from the church in galatia from the book of galatians today we'll be continuing the same series uh, the church in galatia all oh, foolish galatians it is important for us to appropriate the teaching of God to our personal lives. And so through this, we can display publicly our affection towards God. And I'm believing as we continue to learn from this book, chapter 4, that God himself will speak to you in the name of Jesus. Let us pray as we get started. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this grace. I want to thank you for this opportunity that I have to bring the teaching of your word to your people. I pray, Lord, that you take over my vocal cord, speak expressly to their heart. Not only that they, we hear this word, but that we appropriate it into their daily lives. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Brethren, I want you to realize that being a member of a church would not necessarily connote growth or development. Being in a church for so long might not necessarily depict that you have a true understanding of the scripture. On countless occasions, you see people in the church not paying attention to what the preacher is preaching or to pay attention to the teaching of the pastor. I want you to know that if you are not attentive in an environment of faith, you're literally wasting your precious time. The desire of God for us is that we will continue to grow in our understanding of His finished work on the cross. We will have a true understanding of our salvation. We will have a true understanding of sanctification. Have a true understanding of redemption and have a true understanding of the coming, the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Without the total package of this newness of life, uh, we would not really enjoy the reason for being saved. And I'm praying to God that your case will not be like this church. And uh, even if your case is like this church, I'm trusting God that from today you will start to grow in your knowledge of the scripture. Not necessarily that you have to understand Greek or Hebrew, but at least when there is revelational knowledge from the scripture, you will uh, turn in your spirit to align what you are learning to your way of life and uh, this church uh, Paul wrote to them and he illustrated to them things that they need to know uh, because they were living under pseudo religion false religion false doctrine you can be a Christian and still be living under false doctrine or false belief system so the more you hear the word of God, the more you hear the true message of faith, the better you'll be able to grow in your understanding of true faith. Let us read the scripture. We're going to read from Galatians chapter 4, verse 19. My children of whom I travail in birth, again unto Christ be formed in you. It was writing to believers, but yet they are not uh, in full understanding of Christ's nature. The same thing with us. The moment we gave our life to Jesus Christ, 
maybe as a result of revival, as a result of a nudging in our spirit, we made that decision that, yes, Lord, I want to spend the rest of my life pleasing you, obeying your instructions, because you cannot please God except you hear his instruction and you follow through his instruction. And the desire of God for humanity is that every one of us, we hear him, every one of us, we obey his instruction, we align our ways of life to his will and to the total reconciliation of humanity to, to himself. The moment you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you have a call to know him, that I may know him. And that is important. Irrespective of how long you've been in church, you must constantly desire to know more of him. I've seen people that when a minister is preaching, they already zero their mind that what is it that you want to say that I don't already know. You will be in trouble with your growth in your understanding of the nature of Christ if you are not, you don't have open minds to the things of the scripture. In this case, it was more of a different understanding. And that was why Paul used the illustration because we have women also in this church that have gone through childbirth and they know the pains of childbirth. And so it's important that Paul wrote to them from the perspective, from the simplicity of his art, so that this ones we know what exactly that he was talking about. So he referred to them as his little children of whom he labored until and is continuing in the labor until Christ be formed in them. That is our responsibilities as believers, as pastors, as teachers of the word of God, that we will continue to labor until Christ be formed in the life of our members or in the life of believers. So verse 20, I desire to present with you now and to change my voice for I stand in doubt of you. Well, the practical way we can look at this is you've been teaching your members for so long and they are still exhibiting certain characters. They're exhibiting certain behavior that is not in line with what you've been teaching them. So you have to go back to the rudiment. You have to go back to the foundation. You have to start afresh. Again, you know, not everyone will catch up to the understanding, to your state of spirituality. So, um, is unfortunately, is our responsibility. And that is why in this church, God gave us the instruction to push people to the place of intimacy with him. And that will make the work of, of will make my work very easy because I know they are, if they are true to themselves, they would be growing in their understanding in the secret place. And I can easily tell by how they conduct themselves publicly, the eloquency of their words, what is coming out of their mouth. Are we, you know, judge from that perspective that they are growing secretly beyond what I'm teaching them. The same thing with you. It is going to be important for you to go to the secret place to learn more of God, to know more of God. And then you can enhance this teaching. You can enhance this knowledge because you are also growing secretly in your private intimacy with God. I lay emphasis, a lot of emphasis on growing secretly because your secret intimacy with God is what we're going to see publicly. And it's going to help the work of our ministry because we've all been called to the ministry of reconciliation. It's not just the responsibility of the pastor to reconcile people to God. We all have been called to bring people to the saving grace of God, to the knowledge of Christ's nature. 
Now in verse uh, 20, I desire to present with you now and to change my voice for I stand in doubt of you. Tell me ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear what the law says? If you want to approach under the law, you must understand fully what the law says. Beyond that, if you want to challenge the authority of God, you must know God. And that is why I don't engage in argument. I don't engage in any philosophical understanding of the scripture. It's none of my business. The main reason is because I know God. I understand his dynamics. I know his nature. If you're a non-believer and you're coming to challenge me about my God, I'm not going to listen to you because until you search him out first, search him out and then present your doubt. And I will present my fact to you about his nature. Otherwise, there's no need. There's no point arguing. The same thing with the law and the grace. If you want to argue about fulfilling the law and operating under the ministry of God's finished work or the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, fully you must understand the, the purpose for the law. The purpose for the law. And I made it clear earlier in our, one of our episodes that God gave us the law so that we can go back to him for further instruction. God gave us the law so that we can continuously anticipate for more of his instruction on how we are supposed to live our lives. There is no much difference when it comes to ministry of God's grace. It's just uh, more of you don't need a mediator. You don't need anyone to tell you because you have the spirit of God that is daily guiding you. So the hand of the law is an introduction to fellowship and relationship with God, individual fellowship and relationship with God. In other words, that when you operate under the grace of God, you are operating under the anointing of the spirit. You are operating under the instruction of the spirits and such instruction can only come when you engage yourself fully in the understanding of faith and faith is really the tool of obedience to god's instruction so if you are under the grace you must tune in your spirit to understand the instruction of god to hear god clearly and to obey his instruction obedience you cannot take obedience out of the work of the law and the work of the spirit through grace in our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul wrote to them, hey, you, you desire to be under the law. Do you not hear what the law says? Now let's take a look at the statement of the law. He started by telling them that for it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bond maid and the other by a free woman. Now, let us start from there. If you're using an example from the Old Testament, you use an example of the father of faith. And don't forget, in new dispensation, faith is an important element of our work with God. And if you go back to the story of Abraham, God gave him instruction about the seed, the promise. Of course, revelation conceived in the Old Testament is an indication of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. We will not go through that. But I want you to understand that when God gave Abraham promise, the fulfillment of that promise is not related to the obedience of Abraham. However, the faith that is needed for bringing forth the reality of this promise Abraham exercised that authority. He believed God because he was working with God. And so believing, faith, obedience are part of the package of operating under the grace, under the ministry of the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul gave them the example that Abraham received the promise from God, the fulfillment of that promise. God is going to take care of that. But we must see certain things in the life of Abraham. There must be a residual faith, a residual belief that can bring forth 
the true revelation of this promise. And so the Bible says he walked with God. Faith is activated. That true of obedience is activated when you constantly engage with God. Again, in new dispensation, we must constantly expose ourselves to what God is saying to us. We must work with him. Not necessarily to serve him, but we must strengthen ourselves in the place of intimacy that we know is dynamics. We know is mode of operation in our lives. First, with your life. Because if you look at the scripture from the Old Testament, God dealt with individual to bring transformation to the public. The same in the New Testament, in this new dispensation, God is going to deal with you from individual perspective. It is your relationship. It is not my relationship. It is your relationship with God. And again, your relationship with God should not contradict my relationship with God. Because if you're serving the same God, we have the same spirit of Christ in every one of us, there is collection. We have that connection between the two of us to speak the same language, to understand the same thing, to obey the same instruction. Let's go to the scripture. Paul was saying that, okay, you know, you, you, you want to fulfill the law? Let me take you back to, this, to the history of that. And that is Abraham had two sons, very obvious, the one by the bondmaid and the other by a free woman, because Abraham settled for alternative in anticipation for the promise. Of course, we know how that suggestion came through Sarah. But yet, he's not going to destroy the promise, the original promise of God to give him Isaac. In verse 23, but he who was of the bond woman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. Now, take a look at this scripture very well. I want you to pay careful attention to this. But he who was born of the bond woman was born after the flesh. It was the subjection of Sarah, not God's instruction. And so if you are operating under the law, you are operating under the, 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 the secondary instruction. Secondary instruction, not the primary instruction. So take a look from how the law was given. The Lord, the Lord himself, God, I am that I am, gave instruction to Moses and Moses to Israelite. In other words, obedience or following the instruction, obeying the law is from a secondary source. And so the effectiveness of the law is not going to be solid. Because now they are beholding Moses as the giver of the law and not God himself. In this case also of Abraham's situation, now the, having a child outside the promise of God was initiated by Sarah, not by God. And whatever God is going to do in the life of a believer must be such that no one can take glory for. So think about the promise of our Lord Jesus Christ. No one can say, well, it's going to be easy for Joseph to say, well, if I didn't impregnate Mary, Jesus wouldn't have saved you all. But the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ was not conceived by a mortal man. And the delivery was not by anybody. So whenever God is operating with you in new dispensation, it's not going to be by what other people are saying. It's really going to be by the lodging in the place of the Spirit. So if you want to overcome any fleshly things, you want to overcome whatever challenges you are going through, you must tune in your spirit to connect with the instruction of God. And not necessarily what everybody, everybody is saying to you. It's okay to listen to what I'm telling you. But most importantly, that you will hear the instruction of God for your life. You will hold on to his promise. 
I can present the instruction of God to you, but most importantly, you will hear it for yourself and operate in it. The desire of God for us is that we will not settle for alternative option. Because in alternative option, we can say that, well, if not for this person, if not for that person, God is not interested in all of that. He's not going to share his glory with anybody. His interest really is that you and I, we hear his instruction, hold on to his promise, operate in faith, and then see the delivery of that. Now, he was sharing with them in this passage of the scripture that Abraham had two sons, one by a bondmaid and the other by a free woman. But he who was of a bondwoman was born after the flesh, of course, but he who of the free woman was by the promise, which things are an allegory. For these are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai, which generates a bondage, which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. An answer to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with our children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of all. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren, that darest not, break forth and cry. Thou that travelest not, for the desolate had many more children than she which had an husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. Again, Paul used the illustration of childbearing women because they will be able to relate. In, in this church, they have women. They'll be able to relate to this. We know that whatever God is going to do, do through any believer must come from him. Must come from him. Must come from him. And the only way you will know this is when you tarry in his presence to understand his instruction. Obeying the law is not it. Understanding his instruction is the peak of it all. Oh, I want to be this. I want to follow this. I want to do that. It's a good starting point. But really, developing your sensitivity to the instruction of God is very crucial. What is God saying to me? What is God saying in this situation? What is God leading me to do? How am I operating in His will? How am I growing in my understanding of His nature? You must Find a way to know how God communicates to you. It's not difficult. It's not difficult. The other day, God was telling me that good job. The other day, God was telling me that rest in me. You know, God will speak to you. you are, it's just like you have a child. You don't want to be quiet all the time. You, you want to engage in conversation. You want to direct the child. You want to lead the child. You, you want to give instruction to the child. You want to call to the child. You want to love the child. You, you, you want to relate with the child. The same thing with our God. His desire for us is fellowship, intimacy. He will always do his own part of the deal. You have to. Develop your sensitivity to his instruction. I'm talking to believers. Unbelievers, I have nothing else to say to you than to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. In fact, it is the first step of obedience. And if, for those of you that are believers, if it was so easy for you to receive him as your personal Lord and Savior, you, you must have heard instruction. It should be easy for you to continue in that trend of Listening to him, hearing his instruction, growing in your knowledge of him, understanding his dynamics and his nature. That is who our God is. Complacency. Some of us, we've been in church for so long like this church in Galatia, very long in the church. And so we started picking some false doctrinal beliefs. Now we are no longer hearing God. All we are doing is meetings upon meetings. 
administrative work. That is good. I operate in that office too. But we must devote ourselves to the understanding of the scripture, being sensitive in the place of the spirit. And in prayer, when you pray to God, you hear him. You're sensitive to his instruction because communication is two ways. As you're speaking to him, you're hearing back from him. But we want to be politically correct, philosophically correct. And so we are blinded to the things of the spirit. We are no longer hearing God anymore. You yeah, know, being a pastor and having a doctor or doctoral degree, you know, I have to just, you, you may want to be thinking critically about everything. You know, this is right. This is not right. Let's permutate. No, 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 no. I have to. There's a thin line. I have to align my thought process, my thinking capacity to what exactly is God is saying. The same thing with you. Whatever it is, you know, whatever the understanding of the scripture that you think you know, you must humble yourself to hear the instruction of God. People don't want to hear God's instruction anymore. They just want to argue about all kinds of things. Oh, this is not politically correct. God didn't say you should not drink. God said you should drink a little, but not so much. And God didn't say that you, you cannot do this or you cannot do that. You know, tithing, no tithing, all those nonsense if you are hearing god's instruction for yourself you will know whether to give 10 or to give 100 or to give a thousand times instruction is important it is you cannot remove instruction in the dispensation of grace you cannot in fact in the times of the law it was wrapped in the instruction of god but we look at the law as letters as Oh, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. But is it, it was much more than that for God. God's interest really is that through the law, we can come to him for further instruction. And in the dispensation of grace as well, through a singular instruction, we can go back to him for more instruction by becoming sensitive in, a, in the place of the spirit to understand his mind for our lives. It's not difficult. It's not difficult. These people, in the, in this passage of the scripture, Paul had to explain to them again, they flow. And there's no need to go through Moses. No, no need. Let's talk about the, 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 the juicy part of it. And that is the father of faith that received instruction. And through his obedience to his instruction, the seed of the promise came. Even though he settled for alternative, that did not stop the promise of God. And if you look at the dispensation of God's grace in our lives, even when we don't fully operate in his instruction, we still get benefit of his own part of the deal. That is grace. So you can even see grace. In the life of Abraham in the Old Testament, because he walked with the Lord, he was not full of himself. He just want to know God. He just want to display his affection and let go of his family just to obey the instruction of God. That alone is enough for God. In fact, the foundation of your faith, which is receiving him as your personal Lord and Savior, is enough for God to bring you to the fullness of his grace. And if this person can allow me to take charge of his life, there is nothing you will do that will not make him to fulfill his own part of the deal. But it's going to be interesting because the effectiveness of your ministry here on earth is tied to your obedience to God's instruction, to your faithfulness to your own part of the deal, so that when you speak about the word of reconciliation, people will listen to you and you can draw as many as possible to the same saving grace. This is grace. Take a look at the scripture. We are also children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. The same with us. Born of the spirit. Still trying to fight with the desires of the flesh. 
countless occasions you begin to, why am I like this? I'm a child of God. Why do I have to harbor unforgiveness in my heart? That's the deeds of the flesh. And so if you look at the later part in Galatians chapter 5 and 6, you see where he started talking to them about the strength of their character. Which can come from the fruit of the Spirit. He talks about the deeds of the flesh as well. This is important. In verse 30, nevertheless, what says the scripture? Cast out the born woman and her son, for the son of the born woman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So their brethren were not children of the born woman, but of the free. Don't operate under the, 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 the hierarchy of disobedience, the hierarchy of uh, fleshly decisions. Don't operate through that means operate from the perspective of instruction through abraham and then isaac through our lord jesus christ and now you it's the desire of god for us we are not children of the bond woman but of the free one the one that came directly from god himself the promise that came directly from God himself. And God was building lineage from that to the point of our Lord Jesus Christ and now to us new dispensation believers. But the choice is yours as always. In the church of God, we must really talk about the apostolic doctrine, the doctrine of new dispensation believers because this is going to strengthen us again we must not exclude the dynamics of god in the old testament that's another topic entirely we must have full understanding of that how god was bringing people to himself i don't want you to forget one thing second corinthians chapter 5 verse 20 we are ambassadors we are representative of god reconciling people day in day out we can do that by the strength of our character by our conduct and how competent we are we can do it the ministry of reconciliation we have all been called to the ministry of reconciliation so how am i reconciling people to god it must be through my obedience it must be by me listening to the instruction of god and the instruction of god cannot come Except I fellowship intimately with God and understand His voice in the Spirit. Father, I want to thank you for this grace that I have to teach your people. That's my prayer, Lord, that they will not just listen to this to feel good about their lives and their works, but Lord Jesus, they will use this as a tool to bring as many people as possible to your understand, to your grace, and to who you are in the name of Jesus. I pray for those that are yet to receive you as your personal Lord and Savior. Only you can do that in their lives. And I ask, Lord Jesus, that you penetrate into their heart and your spirit will convince them of who you are in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for being part of our Bible study. I look forward to having you next time. Don't forget to be part of our e-member. Subscribe to our channel. Set up the notification. And uh, we will be glad to welcome you into this wonderful